Coming up, let's hear about Epson's Moverio BT300 Smart Glasses. You're watching YBL-TV. Let's talk about your Moverio BT200s and how they're different from the upcoming 300 series. The biggest thing is probably size and weight along with the new projection technology which is silicon based OLED. And those two are really critical to me because with augmented reality, what you really want is a very nice screen, an easy to see image, high brightness, high contrast levels, and that's what OLED or silicon based OLED enables. It's similar to what you're seeing in televisions these days, where a lot of people are moving from traditional LED TVs to OLED for deeper black levels. Additionally, we really worked on trying to get this down to a wearable display. It's down from 88 grams on the BT200 to, we haven't got the final spec, but somewhere in the 60 gram range for the 300s. A lot better weight distribution. It feels a lot more natural when you're wearing it so that you can get the extended use. And then finally, we've really continued to focus on what we'll call function over form. We're not going for the beauty pageant award with these kind of glasses. We want them to be functional and to allow people to do their job better, for example, to fly drones, to do things that really make sense. And it's not just about looking cool or having a device that fits your, your style for the day. Speaking of drones, your partnership, your business collaboration with DJI, can you share with us a little bit more about that? Sure, so DJI is uh, very well respected within the quadcopter industry, as you know. They hold a, a very dominant share, and we've been very fortunate to work with them on a number of projects. What we're really trying to offer is an FPV, or first-person view, set of glasses, so that a, a drone pilot, when they're out in the field, or when they're piloting their quadcopter, they're able to get the live stream from their camera directly in the glasses itself. This is becoming increasingly important as they've told us about FAA regulations and maintaining line of sight with your quadcopter while you're flying it. So we're just working closely with them to hopefully be an asset to their organization. What are some of the biggest differences between augmented reality and virtual reality for those out there that might not know? They all do use this kind of display technology that allows you to wear something and see additional information. The biggest difference is at its core, virtual reality removes you from the real world. You're typically sitting down or maybe you're in an environment with cameras around you to detect your movement, but at its core, you cannot see through the product. Augmented reality tries to overlay the digital information on the real world so that if I'm standing here with you or with someone else, I can add additional information. Where this is very common or, or very practical is often in enterprise. If I'm a service technician or in a manufacturing or logistics environment and I want to see a utilization rate, or I want to see instructions on how to service the machine. With augmented reality, the camera can recognize that product or that machine and then pull up additional content to help me do my job. You've discussed enterprise level with consumers as well out there that want to take advantage and, and jump in with augmented reality, virtual reality, etc. How, how are some of the price points? What we've tried to do is offer it at a, a more affordable price. So these are typically around $700. The BT300, we haven't announced pricing, but probably in the seven to $800 range. So trying to keep it sub 1,000 so that people who want to experiment and try new use cases can go after it. We've had dentists and healthcare providers use it because they want to wear some sort of headset. And instead of having to look back to a monitor while they're doing a surgery, they can put that information directly in front of them. Consumer-wise, the main area we've seen pickup is drones because this is, even at $700 to $800, that's a little bit high for the average consumer. We have seen interest from gaming and from entertainment. It just on its own doesn't feel compelling enough for a consumer to spend the money. But when you pair that with something like flying their quadcopter, then all of a sudden they're getting a lot of use out of the device. The other places we've seen consumers start to pick it up in terms of use is what we'll call B2B2C. So businesses who are actually selling it to consumers or renting it, museums, tourist attractions, sporting events, where if you're watching a football game and you want to have real-time statistics or your fantasy football feed coming through, you could watch the game and have glasses on. Or if you're at a museum and you want to learn more about Picasso, you don't want to take away from the art, but maybe you can present information in a way that's helpful so that you don't just have the docent giving you an audio tour, you have a visual tour as well.